Hi, welcome to the Beginner's Guide to MQTT video and in this video we're going to look at the basics of the MQTT protocol and we're going to look at the components that make up a, an MQTT system, the broker and the, and the client. So MQTT stands for MQ Telemetry Transport. You may see it referred to as Message Q Telemetry Transport but that name tends not to be used anymore as MQTT doesn't actually support queues. The MQ designation, I believe, refers to an old IBM product range that was around when MQTT was designed. Now, MQTT is a lightweight publish and subscribe messaging protocol and designed for machine-to-machine -machine, um, communication, telemetry, uh, in low bandwidth environments. It's designed by a couple of guys working for IBM, Andy Stanford Clark and uh, Arlen uh, Nyper, if I pronounce that name correctly. Um, back in 1999 and designed for connecting all, all pipeline telemetry systems over satellite. It started life as a proprietary protocol uh, but since been um, released as an open source uh, protocol uh, by Oasis uh, back in 2014 and it's fast becoming uh, one of the main protocols for the Internet of Things. There are actually two versions of MQTT. Uh, there's the original version, which was designed in 1999 and designed to work over TCP IP networks. And there's the newer version called MQTT SN, designed in 2013 or specified in 2013, and designed to work over UDP and other network transports other than IP. Now, MQTT SN isn't very popular at the moment. You won't find much information about it on the internet. The two protocols are incredibly similar. Uh, once you know one, you'll know the other, really. And I'd expect MQTT SN to become more popular in the future. If you want to actually look at MQTT SN, then I've got a page on the site called MQTT SN Working Notes, which show you how to install the uh, broker and the and the client. However, in this video we're going to concentrate on the original version, the one designed to run over TCP IP. Now, MQTT uses a publish subscribe model and it requires the use of a central broker and that's shown in the diagram below. So we have a publisher that publishes on a topic and this one on the left is publish on a topic called House Sensor 1 and we have subscribers which subscribe to topics. Now you can su you can have multiple subscribers subscribe to individual topics and you can see here I have two subscribers here subscribe to House Sensor 1 and they will receive all messages sent by not just this publisher but any publisher to that topic and you can see here that this subscriber here is, is subscribed to a different topic and he doesn't see messages sent to this this topic but he will receive messages sent to house uh, sensor 2. The the model is similar to what broadcast radio and broadcast TV where you have a radio station or TV station broadcasting on a particular channel and for channel you can substitute topic and the listeners um, tune into that channel to receive that channel just like the subscribers subscribe to a particular topic to receive messages on that topic and in this model there's no direct connection between a publisher and the subscriber so if we go back to our diagram here the subscriber here doesn't know anything about the publisher and the publisher here doesn't know anything about the subscriber just like with radio and TV um, broadcast to broadcast but it doesn't know whether anyone's actually listening to that broadcast. Now MQT topics we said before these are like um, channels in TV and in the TV and radio model they are what connects the publisher and the subscriber together there's actually no formal structure for the topics and the publisher is free to choose its own topic names and, and topic structure and I'm going to do another video on MQT topics and we'll talk about the actual topic structure in more detail. So what happens when we publish messages? Well when a client publishes a message on a topic then the broker will distribute that message to any connected clients that have subscribed to that topic which is what we saw in the in the diagram. Now once the message has been sent to those clients it's actually removed from the broker. There are exceptions 
If no clients have subscribed to the topic or they aren't currently connected to the broker, then the message is immediately removed from the broker. Again, there are exceptions. In general, the broker doesn't store messages, which is the important point. There are a few instances uh, that we got here, retain messages, persistence, connections, and various quality of service levels, which we'll talk about in a minute, that can result in messages being temporarily stored on the broker. Now, MQT QoS levels, now MQTT was designed to work over unreliable, low speed, relative low speed networks. And that means that messages can get lost. So even though we're using the TCP IP transport, which has message retransmission, we can still lose messages. So MQTT lets you select from three quality of service levels uh, depending on how important your messages are. So if your application can tolerate lost or missing messages, then you can lose, choose the lowest level, which is quality of service zero, which is usually the default. Otherwise, you need to use quality of service one, which it guarantees at least once delivery, it might deliver twice, or quality of service two, which is at most once, so it will only deliver one, one message. Now, I'm not gonna talk about those in detail here, but th if you go to the site, you'll find um, two um, tutorials, which go into a lot more detail on the very quality of service levels one and two. The important thing to note is the higher the quality of service level, the more message overhead is involved. So if you're using quality of service level zero, there's very little message overhead. If you're using one, there's more. And if you're using two, there's a lot more overhead. MQTT brokers or servers, the original term was broker, but it actually has been standardized now as server. So you'll see both terms used, broker and server, they're the same thing. Now there's many MQTT brokers available. Um, that you can use in real applications and for testing. There's free self-hosted brokers, uh, most popular being Mosquito, and it's the one I use. And there's commercial ones like HiveMQ. Now Mosquito is a free open source broker. It runs on both Linux and, and Windows, and it's written in, in C. If you don't want to install and manage your own broker, uh, you can use cloud-based brokers. Um, Eclipse has one, and there's lots of other cloud-based MQT brokers that you can use for testing. You'll actually find a list on the, on the site. And you can see that I've given you one there, iot.eclipse.org, and it works over port uh, 1883 or 8883 if you're using secure sockets layout. And finally, uh, MQTT clients. MQTT clients don't have addresses like you find in most other messaging systems like email uh, and telephone and so you don't need to assign the addresses to, to clients. Uh, you'll find client software available uh, in most programming languages, Python, Java, JavaScript, and for all the main operating systems, Linux, Windows, and Mac, and you'll get them from the Eclipse Power Project, and you'll find a link on the site. In the examples on my site, I use the, the Python client. And to finish off, uh, some resources you may find useful that you'll find again on the site, and. At the bottom, you'll see the main link to the MQDT section on the site. And so that's the end of this introductory video, introduction to MQTT. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, if you have any comments, then use the comment form below. If you like or dislike the video, then use the like button uh, below. If you go over to the website, you'll find an email subscription form uh, if you want to subscribe to uh, my email newsletter. And so until next time, uh, bye.